Hi, I'm Dr. D. Stevens, and I'm a doctor of chiropractic. This is the first video of a number of videos I will be covering on the conservative treatment of a number of ailments and conditions, uh, starting with headaches. And from there, we'll be covering subjects such as fibromyalgia, ADHD, neck pain, uh, low back pain, sciatica, um, and carpal tunnel. Uh, please stay tuned. If you like this video, please share it with others. <clears throat> First, to give a little background on myself, I have been a practicing chiropractor for over 28 years. After graduation, I worked in two offices in California, uh, and both of them uh, had gyms with the offices. I had the opportunity in these offices to work on many college and professional athletes including professional football players, baseball players, Olympians, um, boxers, basketball players, um, and even the he heavyweight and middleweight boxing champion of the world. After selling my practice in California, we moved to Cache Valley, Utah, and just before selling my office there, we were not only one of the busiest chiropractic offices in the valley, but we were designated number one healthcare facility in Cache Valley, Utah. Now I own and operate Advanced Chiropractic Blackfoot, Idaho. And um, uh, people on a daily basis come into my office and uh, we receive a number of new patients every week and with different conditions. But quite often patients will come in complaining of headaches. And when they come in and explain the headaches, many of these patients have dealt with them for years, chronic headaches, and sometimes they're acute headaches. Uh, but one of the comments they usually will make is, well, isn't, doesn't everybody get headaches? And the answer to that is no. And it's just like any other pain syndrome, if you receive any type of pain from headaches, neck pain, low back pain, our body is trying to tell us that something is not quite right. And, um, and it's just not a normal thing to experience these headaches. Um, when we have a headache, our body um, is um, affected enormously. Sometimes it will cause this dizziness, it can cause lightheadedness, it can cause nausea, vomiting, what have you. But it can be a real nuisance, as anybody that has experienced headaches can testify. It can be a nuisance, and it makes one's life miserable. The first thing many patients do when they experience these headaches is they will, um, or other type of pain, is they head to the medicine cabinet. And uh, they'll grab medicines such as Excedrin, Aspirin, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, or what have you. By taking these medicines, uh, or these products on a daily basis or a regular basis, uh, it can uh, cause many other uh, side effects, which are sometimes pretty daunting. And uh, with these side effects, um, these um, headaches can actually uh, worsen. Um, I can guarantee you that uh, as human beings, we are not deficient in Excedrin, we're not deficient in Tylenol, we're not deficient in aspirin, we're not deficient in Sudafed or ibuprofen or any other uh, type of medicine like that. In fact, uh, a few years back, I remember watching Jay Leno on The Tonight Show, and he is doing a segment on, uh, on um, his headlines. And with these headlines, um, he brought up a medicine, and it was uh, designed to, for the treatment of headaches. And then he turned the bottle of medicine around and you saw the, the side effects that could happen because of this uh, migraine medicine. And um, on the back of the bottle it said the number one side effect of this migraine medicine was a migraine headache. And so, um, and uh, I mean that's, if you look at some of these side effects it could even lead to death with some of these medications. Some people experience headaches occasionally or frequently um, or constantly. And some are dull and some are sharp, throbbing type of headaches and some can be very debilitating. Um, now, um, the question now is, does an apple a day keep the doctor away? And the answer to that is only if you aim it well enough. And uh, 
There's, uh, I don't have anything against medical doctors other than there's too many of them out there prescribing um, way uh, too many medicines for their patients and there's always side effects from these medicines and I remember a patient, one of my first patients right out of, out of chiropractic school in Southern California. She was in a head-on collision and her knees went into the dashboard of the car. It broke her knee caps but it also shoved her femur into the back of her pelvis. Um, and she came in with uh, a lot of back pain. By the time she started seeing us, uh, she had already seen a number of medical doctors. She has seen a number of physical therapists. And we were able to help her overcome the problems in which she had with her back. But one day, at the very beginning of her treatment, she came in and she told me she was coughing up blood. So. I started doing a little homework and asked her what type of medicines she was on and it turns out that her medical doctor had her on like 10 different medications. And I looked it up in the physician's desk reference. Back then we didn't have the, um, the opportunity or the um, uh, technology for Google and we couldn't Google it but I looked it up and I found out two of those medicines you should never take together because those two medicines can cause uh, ulcers. And she, um, I sent her to the gastroenterologist and sure enough she had an ulcer. And so I see the side effects of medicines almost on a daily basis. When you have a headache, um, you just, uh, you know, do you head to the medicine cabinet, pop a pill, or do you lie down? Or do you just grit your teeth and think, well, I just gotta uh, deal with this until it goes away? Um, there is a better alternative um, approach to uh, these headaches and uh, since I have been practiced 28 years it has been my experience that most headache patients can find great relief with chiropractic adjustments. Research shows that spinal manipulation or neck and back adjustments are highly effective in treating people with headaches. <clears throat> In um, a 2014 report in the Journal of Manipulative and uh, Physiological Therapeutics, they found that interventions commonly used in chiropractic care improved outcomes for the treatment of chronic and acute neck pain and headaches and increased the benefit, and the benefit was increased, to, and it's shown in several instances where many other um, common approaches did not work at all. Also a study in, in the same journal in 2011 found that chiropractic care including spinal manipulation helps alleviate and improve migraines and many other types of headaches. 70% or 72% of migraine sufferers in a clinical trial experienced either substantial or noticeable improvement after a period of chiropractic treatments. Define historical skepticism of chiropractic by the, uh, some of the uh, medical practitioners out there. Uh, now I'm going to demonstrate x-rays taken in my office of a number of patients that have suffered from headaches and, um, and I'll show you how they typically present. Then I'll show you before and after x-rays of some of these patients and we'll be able to significantly show how there has been significant improvement in the range of motion in their neck but also either completely remedy their headaches or reduce their symptoms um, by quite a bit. Um, this is a patient that I saw not too long ago and she came into the office complaining of um, neck pain and headaches. And as we look at this patient, uh, we can see that <clears throat> these are her individual vertebrae, these are her disc spaces, and she does have bad disc space here and she also has a bone spur but that's for another class. Um, if we look at her neck, uh, we should see a smooth continuous C-shaped go curve going like this. But she has a C-shaped curve going the opposite direction. This is called a, a reversal of the normal curve. Uh, and this is a sign, these, these type of curves can cause headaches and neck pain. Uh, there's a couple of doctors that I've dealt with in the past. They're emergency room doctors and th from Salt Lake City. And I used to refer patients back and forth. And they went in their office one day and they said that there's only one thing worse than a reversal of the neck. And that's a broken neck. And if we look at this reversal, 
um, the biomechanics are not good with this. And what happens is if we look at someone's neck from the side, and so if you look at my neck, it should be a C-shaped curve like this, and our head sits up here. And let's say this is our neck. When there's a curve, it gives it shock absorption. Um, now, when the neck is flattened out and you hit a bump in your car or you step off a curb, it, gives, it does not give a shock absorption. It jams these vertebrae up and it can cause headaches and neck pain. Um, now, um, with this patient, hers is reversed, which is even a lot worse, and that can cause headaches. Now, if we look at her and we go in to uh, compare a few of these pictures, this is with her standing straight up um, and not moving forward or back. If we compare this and if I compare her standing straight up with the one where she's flexing forward, we want to see motion in each of the vertebrae. And I'll demonstrate this on some x-rays I have behind me in a moment. But if we look at this, when she flexes forward, this space here does not open up anymore going from here to here. When it doesn't open, uh, that can cause a nerve irritation at the base of the skull. When that nerve irritation occurs, it can create headaches. And it's kind of like this replica of the spine. If we look at this replica, this is a side view of, of someone's spine, just kind of the same position she's in. And when a patient flexes forward with their neck, each of these vertebrae should participate in the movement. This red um, uh, plastic thing is, is uh, it's a replica of basically the way the vessels flow through up into the back of the head. These yellow ones are nerves. When the patient flexes forward, it should open this up, which helps keep the nerve irritation off the nerves and vessels. If a nerve becomes irritated, then the patient may experience stress or tension headaches. When the vessel is irritated, then uh, the patient will experience migraine type of headaches or cluster headaches. <clears throat> so that's what we're seeing with this patient. I can tell you by looking at this picture, these two pictures, that without even knowing the patient, I, I could tell you if that patient's actually one of those patients that experience headaches. Uh, when she extends back, we want to see how that moves. and so. When this patient extends back, this vertebrae should actually close down and almost touch the skull. As you can see, it's staying the same going from here to here, which is a huge sign of headaches, and that can be a big red flag uh, for this patient um, to experience headaches. Um, now, with that said, I'm going to move over here to this view box. And with this view box, <clears throat> this is a patient that also experienced headaches. This first picture uh, is the patient flexing forward. This is without the patient flexing forward. This is the one extending. This is static uh, x-ray of the patient from the side. As we look at the patient, if we look at this space here and the patient flexes forward, we can see that going from here to here, that space going forward should actually open up more. It's actually staying about the same, which can cause nerve irritation here, which can trigger a headache. Um, now, if we template this and we put this picture or x-ray on top of the one where um, with her moving on, on top of the one where she's not moving, we should see motion in each of the vertebrae. So if we template this and we put seven on seven, six does not move, five does not move, and four does not move. That can cause irritations to the neck and cause, can cause all kinds of other symptoms, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. <clears throat> As we have four on four, three moves because there's two lines. That's great. That's what we want. And then we put three on three, two does not move. And again, one is actually not moving at all when she flexes forward. These, again, the top two vertebrae are the big headache buttons when it comes to nerve pressure. Um, when she extends, we want to look at this. And if we put seven, excuse me, six on six, we should see motion in five, which we do because there's two lines. And we put five on five, four moves, three moves, and four. Then we put three on three, two doesn't move. The only one not moving is when she extends. 
<clears throat> it actually opens up more when she extends and it should be shutting down. Again, that's a red flag for nerve irritation. Um, just to give you an idea of before and after treatments, and we can go through these all day long, but I don't want to belabor it, but there's, this is a patient um, before we started treatment, same patient after we, uh, about halfway through the, the treatments, whereby when she uh, flex forward, there was not much space here. It actually opens up a little bit more. And as you can see, with the treatments, we are able to get range of motion in the neck, which helps decrease the neck symptoms and it will decrease the problems with headaches. Um, this is another patient um, before and after. This patient, that's, uh, he had a, re a flattened, uh, uh, what's called, this is called an atlas angle, and it was at a negative two degree angle. Uh, when this is decreased, that's another sign and a red flag for nerve irritation and headaches. After we got through with treatment, we were able to move that tendon. We weren't actually through here. We were about halfway through with the treatments. We were able to get more of a C-shaped curve back in the neck, and we are able to shift the head back. For every inch, the middle of this is the middle of the ear and if we drop a gravitational line down through the middle of the ear her or his head was shifted forward by about two inches for every inch the head is shifted forward it doubles the pressure on the disc and the vertebrae and the nerve roots coming out of the neck um, in the spine after we about halfway through the treatment we could see that we we're able to shift this back and this is more aligned with what the way it should be okay now, with that said, I just want to demonstrate what happens when there's nerve irritation. So we're going to use a chart here. And with this chart, this is a muscle nerve and skeletal chart. And this shows the autonomic nervous system in the body. And that's the system that functions when you're not thinking about it. Makes your heart beat, makes your lungs take in air. Each of these buttons correspond to vertebrae in the back. Uh, in, this, in these situations and on the x-ray I demonstrated on the computer, the patients had problems with C1, C2 vertebrae. Uh, there's a neurologist out of Colorado and his name's Dr. Sue, and he found out all it takes is the pressure of the weight of a dime on a nerve and it'll cause a 60% decrease in the function of the tissue the nerve goes to. And the way the body manifests that is through pain, numbness, tingling, spasms, weakness, decreased function. So this patient that I just demonstrated to you has pressure at C1, C2. When there's nerve irritation here, not only can it go up in the head and cause headaches, but it also can cause problems in the upper and lower traps on one or both sides. All right. Um, if we go into C2, it can affect the same area. Okay. Um, if we moved lower in the neck where some of these patients had problems, that can cause problems in the back of the neck, but it can also cause problems in the shoulder girdle. And with enough pressure, it can even cause problems going down the arms. And that's for a different class. But I, one thing I wanted to point out is because of this nerve pressure and decreasing the function of the tissue the nerve it goes to, it, this can actually cause problems and cause a decrease in function in this situation with some of the organs and tissues, such as in the heart and lungs. If it were in the low back, it would cause problems down the legs or even into the colon, reproductive organs or bladder, it depends on what part of the body we're talking about. Um, so <clears throat> with that said, um, I just, as a new patient in my office, I just wanted to uh, let you know that if you came in for evaluation, uh, we would probably have you come in if you mentioned this video and you see this on Facebook or YouTube if you mention this video, I'll be glad to do a complimentary consultation and examination. With the examination, we do over 100 different tests. We're talking about uh, neurological tests, orthopedic tests, uh, range of motion tests, palpation tests to determine if uh, spinal manipulation would benefit your condition so as to uh, help take uh, pressure off this nerve irritation. Uh, it may be that when you come in, we may just have to change something with your diet that may be triggering the headaches, or it may be, uh, mean that we need to give you some type of supplement, such as B-complex, 
or see if you're deficient in other vitamins and minerals. We would also be able to offer advice on changing your posture, the way you sit, the way you stand, the way you hold yourself at work, in front of the computer. Or, um, and, and we just need to find out what's triggering the, he the headaches, which normally we can do. Uh, and this may include even giving you certain exercises and relaxation techniques that you need to perform at home. If you are one of these people that suffer from any type of headache, it, is, it certainly would be worth your time and um, to come in to see if this is something we can help you with. Um, and so that's why we're offering this complimentary consultation exam to see if we can help. Um, you may say, well, what may I have, what can I gain by doing that? Well, uh, you may gain a life free of headaches and pain because quite often uh, that's what happens uh, with many of our patients. Uh, but you may have a lot to lose if you don't uh, come in and try to figure out what can be done. If you like this video feel, um, and you feel it was informative, again, pass it on and share it with others. And I appreciate your attention today. Thank you.